one guy that's going to give him a chance. He's making the switch. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Jacoby Johnson's making the switch to wide receiver. And while it at first felt like maybe it was going to be several weeks until he was going to have an impact, well, it sounds like Brent Venables believes that he can have an impact in the Red River Showdown. They've created some packages for him. I'm excited. I'm curious to what type of packages they are too, right? Because we know how athletic he is and how how good he is in space. I'm wondering if we're going to see like some jet sweeps and stuff or put them in the backfield with the backs. Can we see like a, a old school triple option set you get, or, you know, two running backs with, with Jacoby and, you know, deep in, in a pistol formation or something. I'm just throwing out craziness, but, at the, but seriously, I'm curious to how they're going to get him out in space to where he can do work. The best part is, Texas has never seen Jacoby Johnson on the offensive side of the ball for us. They had, I mean, you can go look at his tape from Mustang. I put some of that tape up, you know, whenever they were talking about switching him over and people laughed at me like, you had to pull high school tape. I'm like, well, yeah, he hasn't played wide receiver at the collegiate level. This is new. This is all a new beginning for him, but he's that talented six two, 200 plus pounds. And he's fast with, like I said, athleticism and the ability to jump and, high point the ball he can do all of that it's going to be interesting to see how Seth Luttrell uses him because at this point this is a great way for for if anybody Seth Luttrell to redeem himself as offensive coordinator if he gets things going with him and gets things going with him and Michael yeah he 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 may have saved some face with the fan base yeah and I think probably what they mean by packages is like hey this is a series of plays that we have in our playbook that Jacoby is comfortable with and familiar with it, maybe it's like a 10 play set out of a certain personnel grouping and a certain formation. And it's like, okay, this is what we're going to throw out there with Jacoby this week. We'll continue to expand upon that uh, because I, I don't see them necessarily using him as a jet sweep guy. I think they want to get him out in, in the formation and get him out in the route concepts and use his athleticism and his speed to try and create some things down the field. I, I, I think we'll see him with, Dion Burks, if he plays and, and JJ Hester trying to run some scissor concepts and getting both guys down the field or, or trying to see if they can use his size on some of those curl routes that they like to run in, in out there on the sideline. I think you're going to see him just kind of in the traditional offense, but it's a, a select group of plays and a right. se- select group of concepts that Jacoby's good with. Like, all right, we feel comfortable throwing him out there in this. I don't know how many plays or, or packages it is, we feel good about Jacoby in this grouping. And so we're going to feel comfortable throwing him out there when we're running that personnel package or we're running that offense because we're going to need him. We're, we're going to need more athleticism and, uh, and more of that, that size on the outside. You know, some Brendan Thompson's been really good on the outside, but it, it's kind of all you've had consistently mm-hmm. on the outside. JJ Hester is really good. He stepped up against Auburn. Now he needs to take another step forward. If Jacoby can be that fourth wide receiver for you, that's huge, dude. It really, really is because your your young guys just haven't really proven to be consistently capable down in and down out. So if this gives you another guy that can make some plays for you on the outside, man, that's gonna it could be it could be huge for Oklahoma. I'm not gonna create high expectations like Jacoby's gonna go out there and catch five balls for 100 yards and a touchdown. No, if he if he catches three passes for 35, 40 yards in this game, that's a huge win for the Oklahoma Sooners offense. Yeah, you just need him to be in some plays to to throw things off for that Texas defense. You gotta you gotta have them thinking. That's really all it is, right? And, and you don't know what he's capable of yet until he actually gets on the field. We're still waiting to hear if Deion Burks is either in or out. We don't have anything official with that, so you gotta wait and see what comes there. But for the most part, the, the critical piece and component here is what exactly can he do to make the Texas defense think adding him, as you mentioned, JJ Hester coming out, Jaquez Petaway. We've got a lot of players. We just need someone to step up and say, I'm going to be that dude. Yep. And if Jacoby can be at least a piece to help everybody else get confident or at least help everybody else find ways to get open, that's just a win for the team. 
Yeah, I need somebody to come out and go CD Lamb and say, yes, hey, I'm, I do. I'm, I'm him. I'm I need breaking an every I'm tackle that comes my way. <laughs> yeah. Like, I need an I'm him game from somebody in this game, whether it's Jaleel Fruit, like Jaleel Fruit did a year ago against Texas, where he went yeah. and he, he stood midfield as Texas is running on the field. It is one of the best little videos I've, I've ever enjoyed, ever seen in sports. It, just the it's like it's cinema it's yeah. cinema he's out there by himself and the texas players are just running right at him and it's ruined by key lawrence getting involved but it was it was awesome and then he goes and has five for 130 in that game and has uh, several big plays throughout the game the the one you know the big diving catch falling away i need somebody to come in and have an i'm him game whether it's jj yeah. hester or brennan thompson or Dion Burks, or Jacoby, or Jaquay, whoever it is, somebody needs to step up and go, go big. Or say that I got Oklahoma this. might go home with a loss. Yeah, we we don't want to do that. We want to be play spoiler, right? Let's make it three weeks in a row that the number one team goes down. Let's get weird and make this 2007 again. Remember that year when the number two team lost like five weeks in a row? Let's do it. Let's be weird out here and start knocking teams off. Because the best part about that would be is that it would just completely muddy up the waters in the SEC of who could even make the championship. Because just about everybody, because Texas is the last undefeated team right now mm -hmm. in the conference. And we need to be the ones to take that away from them. Yeah, so I meant to throw this out there earlier, but I was going back over the last 11 years, the team that is ranked lower in the Red River Showdown is five and six. Hmm. Interesting. Sometimes that was Oklahoma as the lower ranked team. Other times that was Texas as the lower ranked team. But the lower ranked team is five and six in this game. It's mm. it's the proverbial throw everything out the window. Yeah. Rivalry it, game. Yeah. It's sorry guys, there's not there's no logic here. We're just going to play it. ball. Right. Trying we'll, to argue we'll, that with some other folks and hey, look, it's this game is just weird. It's just weird. It's going to get weird and there's going to be times in this game that it gets weird. This isn't tw this isn't 2022 either where Oklahoma yeah. didn't have a quarterback they felt comfortable throwing the football. They've got a They've got a quarterback they feel comfortable throwing the football that's going to take care of the football going into this one. So I'm pumped. I'm excited. We're going to continue to get you ready for the Red River Showdown. On Thursday, we'll have our show with Jonathan Davis of Locked On Longhorns in our crossover event of the week. And then on Friday, we'll give you our keys to the game predictions. We'll also go through the rest of the SEC slate as well and discuss that. Man, we I love Red River Week. It is the best week in it's the college sports calendar. It's so much fun. Win or lose, we're going to have a blast this week. We're going to talk about it all as well after the fact. So make sure you're tuned in. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts or over on YouTube where you can subscribe as well. Hit that notification bell to let you know when new episodes drop. Follow Jay at Unfair Sports. Also on YouTube, Unfair Sports. Follow me at John Nine Williams. You can read my work covering the Sooners over at Soonerswire.com. The show is at Locked On Sooners on all of the social media platforms. So go follow us wherever you like to do your social media stuff. But until next time, he's Jay Smith. I'm John Williams. We'll continue to get you ready for horns down all week here on Locked On Sooners. Boomer. Sooner.